Today on Animal Airport. With a change in the quarantine laws, it's the reception centre's busiest time ever, and they're struggling to cope. Essentially, it could delay aircraft. No, okay. Tempers flare as they try to reunite animals with their owners. You guys have been abusing us for 13 hours. I think you're I'm here, that I'm fainting. And two dogs imported from Poland without the right paperwork only make matters worse. The 1st of January, you're allowed to take a pet under the cabin like AV. No, you're not. Yes, we are. With nearly half a million flights a year, Heathrow is the busiest international airport in the world. As well as 65 million human passengers, each year around 40 million animals passing through the airport check in at the Animal Reception Center, affectionately known as the Ark. It's the first week of January. The rules on quarantine have just been relaxed and the ARC staff are preparing themselves for a deluge of pets. It's 10 to 5 in the morning and I'm at work. And I need a cup of tea, now a cup of coffee to start the day. For the first time, as long as they have the correct paperwork, dogs and cats from any country in the world can enter the UK without going into quarantine. And pet owners across the planet are keen to take advantage of this change in the law. So it's become very, very easy for people to bring their animals in around the world. So everyone is bringing their animals in around the world today. I'm so shocked. How are we going to fit all that? It's bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> OMG. Just looking at this flight here with 23 dogs and nine cats on one flight. It's um, quite crazy. I don't think I've ever seen that number on one flight. Manager Rob Quest is preparing for battle and he's bringing rations. I can't see us getting the opportunity to have proper lunch breaks today. So I've just brought a load of stuff in for the staff so they can just grab something and eat. They'll need fueling up. <laughs> With over 200 pets due in a single day, there'll be a lot of owners. On the other side of the car park, Lisa is already preparing for the onslaught. Oh, all animals, but for people. This is actually our uh, training room for when we have courses. But because today's going to be very, very busy, our conservatory for people to wait is very small. There's going to be so many people, so. We're going to have this as an overflow, and we don't use it that much, so I'm putting the heating on, put some magazines in here. I might put a plant in here, make it feel a bit more homely. It's not a very nice day. We can't have people standing outside. Um, just trying to make it a bit more comfortable for people while they're waiting for their pets. Three trucks are already heading to meet a flight from Australia, led by Supervisor Stewart. It's the most I've ever seen come into the ark during the day. I mean, it's over 150 pets, which is, you know, more than we would do in one week to have in one day. It's just, uh, just beyond belief, to be honest. Absolutely un unbelievable. Yeah, I think this is the first time, actually, I've seen this happen, that we've had to have, like, three vans for one flight. So it's pretty unique. I just hope it won't become a regular thing. Now the pet scheme has changed. Um, I hope this is just going to be a one-off. So the first quarter's flight's just come in. It's where it gets a bit chaotic now because everyone's trying to offload the plane. Stuart takes control. I've got Chris in one of the smaller vans waiting over there to pick the animals off that are coming out of hold five. I hear some of the livestock now coming off. Despite the flood of animals, each still needs to be given individual care and they're not taking any risks with the weather. It's a pretty windy day today, so I was on the uh, rocket, as it's called, just holding the boxes as they were coming down, just so they don't get blown off and cause uh, an accident or an uh, escape animal. I've seen it before, yeah, uh, dogs as well, so all it needs is just one big gust of wind, knock it straight off and then that's it, you'll be uh, running around the airport for an, uh, an escape dog, uh, cat. I've got a slight issue. Look at mine. 
and then go and climb up there and have a quick look up there. The, the pallet's just there. The pallet's even bigger. I've got no room. Well, I think we both have to go back. And then... Yeah, go back and both do that one. Yeah. Cool. Right, we're going to have to go back, unload, and then do the other pallet. Really? Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, stuff, mate. Actually, stuff. Oh, mate, cool. An extra collection from the Qantas flight will only compound problems back at the Ark. Flight after flight has landed, and pet pickups are falling further behind. Well, this one we know. The wind's against them, too. Today, the weather's, like, really windy. And so what, what, what happens is, which most people know, is when the wind gets behind the plane, it gets here faster, but the wind keeps changing. So one minute they're getting here earlier, the next minute they're getting here later because the wind keeps changing. It's a big van, that's a big van. What time's Continental in? Six to twelve. We've got four vans out and they're all a bit full at the moment, so they're going to have to come back and then come back out again. So please bear with us. We need an Arctic lorry if you've got one, if you could lend us that today. <laughs> The problem we've got is there's other flights down now and because we can't fit them in the van, essentially it w could delay aircraft, yeah, depending on how quick we get. And then you look at the queue at the security gate and that's just going to stuff us up even more. Oh dear, it's going to be fun and games. We're going to have people shouting left, right and centre at us going, oh we've got animals down, they've been here for hours. Stuart and Chris finally make it back with their first loads. I've still got one pallet um, on the corner, so, and Chris has got to come out as well for that one. There's still a van load of animals waiting on one of the first flights of the day. Already, the Ark is falling behind schedule. Planes keep on touching down and it seems almost every flight is carrying pets. No, this is probably the busiest day we've ever had, so I've, I've been here for 25 minutes and it's already kind of stressful. Everyone's running around like headless chickens at the moment, but um, it's sort of controlled chaos, if that makes sense. We all sort of know what we're doing, sort of. In animal arrivals, each dog and cat has to be taken out of its box, fed, watered and given a chance to stretch its legs. But there are departing pets as well. These must be x-rayed before they can be loaded onto planes, putting extra pressure on the team. Put more than 60 in this morning already. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think we're laughing because it's only 10 to 9. <laughs> we'll be crying in a couple of hours. Some owners have already been waiting three hours for their pets. I got here at 6.30. My flight was actually like an hour early. Just imagining my little kitty in the cargo. And I was hoping that this process would be going a lot faster, but I think everybody had that kind of idea and everyone seemed to have decided to bring all their cats after the new year. <laughs> well, they said it could be up to six hours. Hopefully it's not gonna be that because it's earlier in the day, but they had said that there had been about 64 animals that came in on Qantas, so our dogs are the only ones on our flight, so hopefully we get through a little bit quicker. There's a flight coming in from the Middle East. Stuart's been working all night, but he's still on the tarmac playing catch up. See if they all winch at me for being late. Going to an Emirates flight and I'm an hour and an hour and a half late, which is just not really on. Fortunately, the airline's been able to offload the dog and keep it on one of its cargo vans. Go to another flight that's over an hour and a half. I'm late for. Just can't keep up at the moment. If it was just like three or four animals on one flight, it'd be fine. It normally takes about an hour for them to offload a long haul flight. So we're only half an hour late. For the airlines, every minute a plane sits on the tarmac costs money. The baggage handlers are under pressure to meet their turnaround deadlines, and Stuart has some explaining to do. All right, sorry, buddy. I've got 150 
animals come in today. No, no, we were saying every, every one of our flights has got a animal in it. Oh, yeah. Like, over 30 on just one flight. Really? Yeah. <laughs> See the back of that lorry there? Alright, oh, mate. Oh, it's only a tiny one. Random inspections are carried out frequently. Let's go this way. Anna and Michelle are in Terminal 3, spot checking luggage. Oh, we need to kind of mingle in here. On a busy day, an illegal transport will only slow things down. Quite often we have animals that come through in bags, which don't necessarily look like um, animal travelling containers. And they're looking out for a specific kind of bag. Like the sports bags there. Um, if you look on Anna's and it's got some pictures of the bags. It just looks like a general school satchel, but these had two chihuahuas in there, so it actually looks like a school satchel. And then you've got the, the grills there, which uh, animal people carry animals in. So that's basically something like that, um, walking around the terminals or something like that, that's something that we can't see, unless, in this case, they got stopped. So that's it's a good reason why we do these checks, just to look out for things like that. All right, this all looks good. <laughs> There's a panda. <laughs> yeah, we think we found a panda. We found an animal. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. At the Ark, the reception areas are overflowing with owners waiting for their pets. Two dogs have been brought in illegally from Poland. They're adding to the workload and taking up valuable space. Things are beginning to unravel. I've been dealing with this since 12 o'clock this morning and I'm still dealing with it. With quarantine relaxed, it's the busiest day ever at Heathrow's Animal Reception Centre. As it approaches lunchtime and animals and owners continue to arrive, the staff have already dealt with more pets than they normally would in an entire week. We are coping as best as we can, put it that way. We are doing everything possible to, to make it go smoothly. We knew what we were in for. To add to the team's woes, two dogs have been illegally transported from Poland, a headache for deputy manager Tristan. It's all going um, horribly wrong at the moment, but um, as soon as we get to see the paperwork, hopefully that will clear up a few issues. The dogs have been bought over the internet and are being delivered by two Polish dealers. Both animals should have travelled as freight. Instead, one was carried in a cabin bag and the other tagged as a piece of ordinary luggage. I don't think they were smuggling it because all the paperwork complies to the UK, so they, it, wasn't, it probably wasn't a case of smuggling. It was maybe just a case that they didn't quite understand how to bring their animal to the UK. Um, so I would probably go that it wasn't, it wasn't, it was just the wrong choice maybe made. I, I wouldn't say it was smuggling. Do you have any documents at all? I don't or a receipt of how, how you, when you got on the plane? They uh, take it from me. It so you don't me. have anything on you at the moment? No. No. It's going to be an anxious wait for the new owners. I just wanted to have exactly that American Cocker Spaniel, black and white, and it was difficult to find it here in England. Yeah, I find her. <laughs> We've never seen the dog uh, before. Um, purely by um, photos and everything else, that was on Facebook. And uh, we locked the dog and made inquiries from that point and um, decided to purse out a load of money and uh, buy it. The waiting's over for some pets and their owners. Paul from Connecticut is about to be reunited with his two dogs, Sport and Alon. I think we're just going to take them out okay. and put them in the car, because okay, they've been... If we get you in the vehicle, by and do okay. it in the vehicle, by, Yeah, that's um, fine. And then we do it from there. Hi, Sport. Sport, good boy. Katrina, do you want Alan? Yeah. Hey, sit. Sport, high five. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good high five. Our wait was about four and a half hours, I think. But for the dogs, it was a little bit longer, but it was definitely worth it. The team at the Ark are working all out to process the pets as fast as their owners are coming in. Monta Agno. You can sit down, not yours. But Sharon can't sit down. Why have your paperwork? And there are still missing owners to find. No? Can we get any information on what's going on? Oh, do you know, if I knew I'd tell you. Pauline? No? 
Despite the long wait, some people are remaining remarkably good humoured. They're trying their hardest, and you can see they're getting a little bit sort of fretful themselves at the moment because people are getting upset with them. And obviously, there's nothing they can do about it. So the, 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 the temperatures are, uh, are rising a little bit, but not with us. We're cool. We're cool. Well, we're cool at the moment. I don't know if that's the case in five hours. If we're still waiting for our dogs, we'll wait and see. Mary and Andrew are waiting for their spoodle Izzy and their labradoodle Amber, who spent 36 hours travelling from Australia. But we've just heard that they've been seen, so that's quite exciting, actually. <laughs> so we hope to see them. Hopefully, in the next hour, would be lovely. <laughs> Do you have any paperwork on you regarding the tapeworm treatment? Anna's trying to get the illegal entries from Poland processed and on their way, but she's discovered a paperwork problem. Yeah, we need, we need a time. But I don't you don't have, have any other paperwork? Uh, no, but it was in the morning. I, um, is there any way that you can contact, contact the vet that, that did it? Right now? Um, if there is a vet open, but we do need, um, exactly we, need time we need the exact time yeah. from your vet. So if I write down what what, paper, what um, information we need, then I'll come back to you. Yep. Okay. Bear me just a minute then. Tapeworm treatment must be administered 24 hours prior to arrival in the UK. If it's out of date, the dogs will need their medicine now and be held at the Ark for a further day. I'm just worried about her because uh, she's a baby and she's without food from yesterday. I don't know when she will be out. On top of that, the importer has just been given an unexpected bill and he's refusing to believe what Anna is saying to him. Well, what normally happens is you would normally pay it's more. It's not normally situation. You, you are holding us here for about six hours from now and you are right now giving me a bill for about 275 pounds, you said? Uh, 270 pounds. I understand that, but if, if it was all done properly and it was on the plane in the correct way, then it there wouldn't... It was properly. Unfortunately, this, this is cast as a legal landing. It was legal landing. After the 1st of January 2012, you're allowed to take pet under the cabin like AVI. It, but it had, it had a bag tag on it. It didn't have a relevant airway bill attached to it. All, all animals that if travel. If you wish, I can give you such a bill because I paid with my like airline uh, kilograms for this uh, for this dog, and we're allowed to do that all over the Europe, all over the world. Not landing in uh, London, UK. You, you You're can't. giving me false information. I, it's, I'm. It's all over the world. I'm not giving you false information. Yes, you do. I, I, if you want to take it up with a manager or something like that, then you can do. But I am not giving you false information. Yeah, this I want is... to speak with the manager. Okay. Because this is like. Is Tristan gone? Oh, this is just a nightmare. In the quarantine area, there's a rather angry looking customer. Cruzo has just arrived from Egypt. Vet Andrew is used to dealing with difficult dogs, so he's got the job of checking Cruzo's microchip. You can't stare, stare at, the, at the dog, you can't, you know. Be aggressive towards it, then he sees there's no problem with you. I've been scratched a couple of times, but I haven't been beaten yet in my life by, by a dog. Could this be the first time? Let's hope Cruzo is just frightened, not aggressive. Food is usually a good peace offering. Gently and quietly does it. Soon Andrew has Cruzo eating out of his hand. Now they're the best of friends. It's early evening, and some of the staff have been on duty for more than 14 hours. And we've gone over 200 animals today. And we're still not <laughs> finished. We're still not finished. We might as well stay for the night shift. <laughs> the staff are working flat out. The kennels are full. The sinks are overflowing, but Lisa manages to find a little spare space on the floor. And still they arrive, in reception and on the runways. 7.16, probably enough, another time to get another pickup done. <laughs> Each pet must be cleared through customs, but there are so many, it's taking three times longer than normal. We've been landed for over 12 hours now. 
So, um, yeah, so we were told an hour ago that they've been cleared through customs and uh, we're still smiling. Sort of. But uh, only just. <laughs> Others have most definitely lost their sense of humour. Hey, you guys took all of my documents. I don't have documents. You took everything. Excuse me, if you do not calm down, we will have you removed from the building. Oh, so just you take swear, a seat, please. All right? Yes, that's you calm down. It is 13 hours that we are we here. We are doing our it's best. It's 17 here. hours that I do not eat. I already we understand lost your predicament. You, you have to understand that us. we are doing our best, and you just have to be patient. I know you've waited. That's it. not your best because we are the last year. We are the f***ing veterans. Why well, can you now? Go somewhere else, please. Should do what? Take Should a seat, do what? because I'm not going to have you being abusive, all right? Abusive? You guys have been abusing us for 13 hours. I think you're I'm fine here, that I'm not fainting. Correct. Right, I'm now going to shut the door because I'm not going to listen to somebody abusing, all right? Abusing? No, I'm not going to listen to abusive language. We've been here waiting for our chance to talk with someone. It's 17 hours that we don't eat. Yes. I, I had, I've lost... 300 pounds because I had to renew my my rental of the car and gonna go to a hotel, so I don't know. And they, and I, of course I raised my voice. But at last there's good news for Angelina, who flew in from the US with her cat at 6.30 this morning. All Rob, the manager, has to do is to find Orphus, amongst the rest of the menagerie. Delta, hello. Hello, pretty cat. Time for you to go home at last. Delta Cat, Angela Zambito. This lady here. There you go. Thank you. Oh, you oh, beautiful. Oh, that one's very not wrong. It's okay. It all worked out, but it was definitely a long day, and I can't wait to go home and sleep. <laughs> now, with Tristan, the deputy manager, the dog importer is still refusing to believe he has a bill to pay. Yeah. The airline charge. Yeah. This, yeah. this is our charge. Everybody pays this charge For and what? this charge. That's to collect directly from the aircraft, to house it here, to do all the pets' paperwork check. So this fee needs um, collecting by ourselves before we will release the animal. But sir, we didn't even receive such information from the well, DEFRA, which is responsible for everything. Like No, uh, DEFRA is not responsible for everything. But the airline should to. have informed you of these charges. They should have also informed you that it should have come in as manifested cargo, which they obviously didn't. No, after 1st of January, you are allowed to take a pet under the cabin like AV. No, you're not. Yes, we are. Uh, I'm afraid you're not. It's an illegal landing. They are your charges. If you don't pay them, we won't release your dog. I'm not going to stand here and argue. We're very busy. Some people have been waiting 15 hours. But for Mary and Andrew, the wait is almost over. They're about to be reunited with their dogs. And even Tristan finds something to smile about. This is the first one I've seen today. and We've had over 150 pets in so far. But they've both got the same chicken, so no favouritism. <laughs> we like the chickens. We do. the chickens. Yeah, one in each box. Oh. And still, the couple haven't lost their sense of humour. Well, the family is back together again, so it's uh, it's good. Yeah, good day. Eventually. <laughs> Price. Price. Don't come to By the end of a very long day, more than 200 pets have passed through the ark. Eight times the usual number. All the pets have now been reunited with their owners and the bills have been paid. So the Polish dogs can look forward to life in their new homes. Yeah, it's nice. It's lovely.